Paul, and um, I've been a Christian for 20 years. I've been partnering with the Church of Christ for five years. Um, yeah, uh, you know, the beginning of this year, they came up, and it's, it's not here now, and I wanted to point to it, where it says, build my life. That's what we've been doing this year. And, um, you know, I thought, build my life. 20 years, surely I've got my life built. You know, <laughs> what are we going to do now? Build my life. I'm 66, you know, and the, 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 the pride wanted to come in. Because I'm like, I know the scriptures. I know, oh, yeah. oh they're preaching on, um, you know, the, the five fishes and the loaves of bread. Oh, it's that, the parable of the sower again. I know that. I know. And you do. The longer you are a Christian, the more complacency can come in and creep into your life. Self-righteousness, pride, judgmental. All these things can creep into your life when you think you're arrived. Yeah. It made me think of Paul, not me, Paul in the Bible. And this is what he said 30 years after he had met the Messiah on the road to Damascus. He says this in Philippians 3 verse 10. I want to know the, uh, the Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering Becoming like him in his death. Paul didn't want a factual knowledge of, of God. He wanted to experience Christ. The suffering as well. We often think when we become Christians, there's going to be no suffering. I can tell you, you want to spend more time with me? You need more than seven minutes. But anyway, yeah, so I just wanted to share one small scripture, one verse to to, to um let you experience how amazing the Word of God is. It's Acts 17, verse 11. And just before that, Paul and Silas were in Thessalonica, and they had to flee. Nobody wanted to hear from them. They had to flee at night, Paul, Silas, and his crew. So they went into Berea. And Acts 17, 11 says, Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Um, it says as well in that that Paul and Silas went straight to the Jewish synagogue as they arrived in Berea. Can you imagine you and I going to a mosque now today and preaching about the Messiah? Or going to the nearest synagogue in town and preaching about the Messiah? I think we'll be stoned or harmed, definitely harmed. But they knew they had the power of God in them. They also knew they were not ashamed of the scriptures. But yet, even though Paul's um, reputation might have gone before him and the people in Berea knew of Paul coming there, they still, it says in there, they were eager to examine the scriptures every day. I mentioned I'm part Jewish, and I know scrolls, they talk here about searching the scriptures. They didn't go into a cozy home with a Bible and page through the Bible. And look, they had to have scrolls. And not everyone had scrolls. Often only the priest kept the scrolls in the synagogue. Very few, uh, possibly the rabbis and that, had copies of the scrolls. And Paul had might have mentioned Joel. He might have mentioned Isaiah, Ezekiel, Psalm, when he was teaching them the, where, it, where it prophesied about Jesus. All those scriptures. So now these people, these men and women, they got, where's that scroll on Isaiah? Where's the scroll on Joel? You know, and they're all over the show. It's, it's not just turn a page, look at the index, oh, there's Romans page. <laughs> it wasn't like that for them, but they were eager. They were ready. They... They knew what they, it was important. This truth, if it was the truth, they needed it because their life depended on it. And they, they had open hearts, open minds, and they, they it could go against everything they'd been taught. You must remember, they're Jews. Look at the Jews, look at Muslims and things today. You leave that faith, you're in a lot of trouble. 
And, and yet here were these men and women examining the scriptures, eager to see if what Paul said was true. And Paul didn't mind that. Paul didn't have a problem with it because he knew he had spoken the truth. Uh, these people, they could have, you know, they could have come with this, uh, oh, he's a good speaker, he's judgmental, he's condescending. We, we can get like that sometimes when we hear the truth being told to us. We sometimes feel, he's judging me, you know, he's, it's offensive. But instead they wanted to know the truth and to make sure for themselves it was the truth. Um, searching the scriptures was worth it for them for the Bereans knew that it was vital and that daily they searched the scriptures. The Bible is not a pretty book of poetry filled with inspiring thoughts for the day or golden nuggets. It is that and more. But it is also the living word of God that can change us, that can transform us. In all the searching, the Bereans remained ready and eager with open hearts and minds. This is why they were considered noble characters. Um, we want to be known as a noble character. And it wasn't noble because they were wealthy or their position or their materialism. They were noble, not in any of those social standings or materialism, but rather by the conduct and the proof of their better disposition. That's what made them noble. That's what set them apart. And that's what set, should set us apart. So in closing, my time's up. It says, I told you I talk too much. <laughs> it says, you know, let us, let us, yeah, I call it the triple E challenge. To examine with eagerness every day the scriptures to what God says is true. That will set you free. Jesus said in John 8, if you hold to my teachings, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I told you it's going to be good. <laughs> I know you've walked with God for many years, and I know there have been challenges along the way, and sometimes you felt lost, and sometimes you felt complacent. And I want to ask you, will you pray for us that that spirit of complacency will go? Will you pray for those maybe who feel lost, maybe you feel like their hearts become a little bit dull to the gospel and the truth? Will you pray for us this morning? Father God, we thank you for this time that we can gather in your name and worship you, God. And we know, God, that the enemy is so busy out there. He doesn't want us to speak the truth in love. He wants us to water it down. He wants us to become complacent. He wants us to stop, like Dimitri said, being persistent. Be persistent. Job was persistent. And, he, and even in his grumbling, he grumbled to God. And he never let go of God. Yeah. And that's what we must do in our lives. Hold on to you, God. Hold on to you. Until that day comes where you come back and fetch us. And I pray, God, on that day, each and every one of us, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen, Father God. Amen.